Welcome back. This is, I guess, take two or part two. So I just kind of talked to you about how art should be fun and what it means to be an artist. And now I wanted to, you know, this is dry. I actually dried it. And um, so what would you do next? Well, what I would do next is I would actually take some of this Liquitex glazing medium. This will seal your paper. And once your paper... You could put this on another sheet. You wouldn't need to drizzle it on here, but I'm just putting it right on there so I don't have to deal with another bunch of it somewhere because I'm just going to layer it on nice and thick. So this will be kind of a sealant to your paper. Now this isn't what I always use. Uh, a lot of times I actually would use um, some varnish. And this, by the way, is a heavy watercolor paper. It's made by Strathmore. It's their 400 series. But a nice heavy watercolor paper, like 140 pound, even 300 pound would be great. And so I'm going to um, quick dry this with a air dryer. It took me like a minute to dry that. All right, so it's dry to the touch. So now um, I like to do transparent glazes. So with that glazing medium again, I like to mix up some uh, somewhat transparent things. So for instance, I'm gonna use a transparent black. This is bone black. And as you can see by these little marks here, you can see through this. So when you add glaze to this, it should be semi-transparent. Um, and depending on your paint, I'm sure that would change with different paints. But I tend to use a lot of Golden products and Liquitex products. Um, I guess I just really like the quality that they offer. I've become a real golden uh, snob as far as my acrylics. I do have others, but I do really like the golden acrylics. They're definitely my favorite, and I like the fluid ones over the heavy body ones in the tubes, but I do have both. And sometimes I do use other paints, too. So this is uh, teal by golden as well and as you can see I did not add any glaze so it's quite opaque it's not completely opaque so how do you know where to put your paint well I guess you just kind of go by what feels good and what marks do you like to use you know there's no wrong way to make an abstract painting but there are better ways to make paintings than others and a newbie mistake is to just blend 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 and slop things together and get things really muddy and so that's probably one of the things that you have to most watch out for and one way to not get a whole pile of mud is to stop what you're doing, change directions, use a hair dryer and let things dry. So I'm kind of letting this dry a little bit, but I'm going to go over here again, use a hair dryer and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back with this dry. So I really like to get into my paintings. I like to use my fingers a lot. It's just something that I really enjoy. I don't know why I think it connects me more to the piece. It connects me to the paint. I just really enjoy it. And you get some different marks maybe that you wouldn't get with a brush. Okay, so what makes a good abstract? Well, one thing I learned in art school that makes a good abstract is multiple, multiple layers of depth. What does that mean? Well, I've already worked in like three layers here. Remember, I did the back scribbles and I went in and I dried it, added paint, dried it. So I'm already getting multiple layers. 
So the nice thing is here is that you can still see some of my marks in the back from the first layer. And there's some clear areas where I actually almost see a little bit of the paper. Then I went in with the black, then I went with the turquoise, now I'm going in with the white. So I'm at like layer three now. So I need to dry this again. And I do that most of the time with the hair dryer because then I can get moving on and just keep going. So it speeds up my process and I just like to keep moving. All right, I don't know if this is completely dry, but I'm back. So I wanted to mention that there are multiple things that make a good piece of art. One is your composition. Is it dynamic? Is it symmetrical? Is it, you know, is there a difference, um, a division of space? Uh, line variation. Do you have lines? Is there a variation of lines? You know, those are some of the things that make a, a decent painting. Is your color good? Is it rich? Is it clean? Is it pleasing? Do you have a color theme or is it just a muddy mess? Do you have value? Differences of value? Is it all the same value? So those are some things to think about as you're creating. And you can look all those things up, of course, to know more about them. Um, <clears throat> one late way that I like to add a lot of depth and kind of get some of those things is by using the glazes. Because when you use a glaze, it makes your paint more transparent. And the reason that that's good is because you get more depth that way. If you're constantly just using all the same opacity, I think that's a word, you're using all opaque paint, um, it's going to be kind of boring. So if you can see some of them other layers, Ooh, I love this. So this is Interference Blue. It's made by Golden. And it is a, like, what do you call it? Kind of a metallic reflective paint. So it does have a blue hue to it, but at the same time, it's transparent. So it's super fun. I could probably cover the whole thing in that because I love it. Sorry, I probably forgot what I was talking about, but anyway. Um, so yeah, you know, we just want to add interest and depth, and we don't want all the same old, same old. You want little things to catch people's attention. What's it look like from far away? What's it look like up close? You know, from far away, this might just look like a mark here, but then you get up close and you might see, you know, something really interesting in that mark. Like you can't see it from far away, but if you get really, really close, right in here, you can see some really tiny fine lines that I put down on the very initial paper. So that are, you know, that's some of the things that you want to look for um, in your work. Do you have a variety of scale? You know, the thing is you want art to draw you in. So you don't want to just see everything from far away. You want to have some little hidden gems up close. So I'm not sure yet, you know, what I'm going to do to the rest of this piece. But I'm on probably layer like four <clears throat> and I'm sure I will do at least one more layer to this. So um, I hope that helped you out. I hope you had fun today. I hope you were playing and being creative and have a great creative day.